And it kind of was not because of something I was doing, although, I mean, because I was doing the same stuff all yeah. the time. I was always working for social progress and um, social justice, human rights issues, but it was when the opposition got stronger. Yeah. So, it's kind of a little bit odd to have other people's actions and counteractions keep shaping and yeah. <laughs> reframing um, your own identity. But I think that that happens probably very often for um, all of us because, you know, again, if somebody commits a crime or if, you know, and they look a certain way, then everybody that looks that kind of way is like, oh, okay, well, we're suspicious, we're not sure. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody, um, you know, probably takes like, about 10 things on the other, other side of the coin to elevate um, an opinion to overcome some of the stereotypes. But, you know, like if there's a success, students 4.0 and um, that wasn't expected to connect with that visual then I think like oh okay you know but then there needs to be a larger body of yeah. work like oh in the like I should actually make it this isn't like a fluke like, right this is yeah just, like this is a consistent thing like wow exactly <laughs> well and that's the thing is that I that um it's different to remove somebody from a group as the exception to the rule and still keep all of your ideas about the group than it is to um, undo racism. I think it's, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm not racist because I have a black friend, or oh, I'm not racist because I have a black partner, or I'm not racist because my kid's part black, or whatever, and it's like, you know, it's but you, you're you using that to justify something, you know, to, to kind of, like, as a free pass. Yeah, it's like, oh, but no, meanwhile, I can say whatever I want, because this will always validate this right, body. Like, right. It matter what I can, I can throw around the N-word because I have black friends, and they do it. Or, you know, any of those things basically do not um, evidence that you have evaluated your ideas about black people um, as a group. That just means that you have a friend, or that you have a child, or that you have a partner, or whatever, but it doesn't mean that you understand and identify with the, the struggle and liberation of that community, and um, are able to articulate even a broad um, view of like the you know, strengths and weaknesses of people everywhere. I think that to um, just even genetically, Africa is like the most diverse continent genetically because of our human origins going back there, um, first of all, but also just um, the capacity for um, genetic markers and, and structures to represent in many different ways. So there's a lack of understanding, I think, in, in general about how and why black people look very different. Yeah. And do, you know, it's like we're people, you know, we do all kinds of things, good and bad, you know. And I remember in undergrad school one time, somebody was like, oh, I love black people, like black people are so noble and they're just so wonderful and so beautiful and so, and I'm just thinking, okay, but that's, that's not humanizing because that noble savage myth really basically, uh, it's kind of like the Uncle Tom sort of, okay, you know, the good black person is always there for um, white people or for who, you know, would never do a, th a thing wrong. And um, it's also kind of the kind other of side, because you, you, <laughs> you dehumanize by like, making someone less than, and then elevating them to a status is also... Right, but, but that's not necessarily elevation, because yeah. we have bad days, yeah. you know, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so being human is going to be the full spectrum of the human experience. Mm -hmm. And so by amputating that at any point can create a three-fifths um, human, you know, construct, whether it's, oh, you know, you guys have, like, you know, not as much of an IQ or because of certain testing results or whatever that, again, are set up to present that answer or there's not as, um, you know, black people are so athletic, you know, it's kind of something that, ooh, you know, of course you would play sports because it's just in your genes. And it's like, yeah, black people are athletic, and so black people aren't athletic, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, or human. Again, it's that 
both and, yeah. not either or. And I think that that's, there's still so much more that even in Hollywood roles or whatever. I had a student here at Eastern actually one time tell me, um, well, it's just so, <laughs> it's so awesome that um, black people are good at sports and are you know, good at music and stuff. And like, white people aren't good at anything. Like, what are we known for? We're not known for anything. And my response was kind of like, huh? You know, basically you're known for everything. You, you know, you like do everything because you're allowed to do everything. And, um, you know, I mean, yeah, there's the stereotypes, like, well, you know, like white people can't dance or something like that. But then you can look at plenty of examples of white people either being able to dance or not being able, you know, I mean, it's out there. And then there's this co-opting of all kind of cultures so that you have an Eminem, you know, who's a rapper, you have a Justin Bieber, who's, you know, I mean, heavily influenced by um, pop, which goes back to uh, R&B, which, you know, soul and gospel and um, spirituals, you know, I mean, it's like the whole black music has, um, music created by black people has influenced every genre of American music. Um, but a lot of people are like, oh, it's just you know, rap and the music or whatever. So, um, but anyway, I don't know. I'm kind of like gone off on No, that's on this great. <laughs>